is that time of year. Optimism reigns supreme. You look at your team's roster and think, hey, this position will get upgraded. This hole will be filled. We will re-sign this player for X amount of money. Hayden, you spent an entire weekend writing up all 32 teams yes, I did. <laughs> of the NFL Combine ahead of free agency, obviously ahead of the NFL Draft. So today we go through every single one of them. I swear I go outside, but this one did take uh, quite a bit of time. 6,000 words or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it was like 6,000 words, unfortunately. Uh, but now I'm prepared. NFL Draft and free agency franchise tags. I got all the details. We'll go one by one. Yeah, and you can check out that column. It is linked in the description down below. And actually, either late this week or Monday ahead of the NFL Combine, we'll have an attached mock draft. The first one oh. via Hayden's brain as, let's say, an accompanying video to this one. And Hayden, just quickly, a lot of sites out there, channels out there will only list like one or two or three team needs. Uh, some of these teams, you have like seven of them. And also they are attached to players at the end of contract. So you just aren't in many cases expecting every single player to return to these teams. Right. So I kind of filtered out some of it. I also ordered these by like how important each position is. So if like right. the free safety is a free agent, that doesn't matter as much as, you know, if the quarterback is. Okay. And we'll go in NFL draft order as expected. That means we kick things off with the Chicago Bears. Hayden's team needs quarterback, wide receiver, defensive tackle, center, an edge rusher. I think the first two are very clearly the most important. Uh, they have the first and ninth overall pick, plus a bunch of uh, just money in general for free agency to kind of get this thing underway. The Justin Fields, it just comes down to this. Over the next three seasons, keeping Justin Fields would cost around $64 million if he was on the fifth-year option and then the franchise tag. The first overall pick is going to make $40 million over the next four seasons, and I just think that Caleb Williams is better. Then Justin Fields, I also think Drake May would be better than Justin Fields as well. So I think that's pretty much a lock at this point. They'll trade Justin Fields, take Caleb Williams. But the wide receiver, I think, is the underrated spot. Darnell Mooney is a free agent. They have Tyler Scott, who can, I think could replace Darnell Mooney. But just, in, just to remember, the targets that went to DJ Moore and Cole Komet, they had a 61% success rate. All of the other targets, 39%. So they just need another pass catcher. Could that be Brock Bowers in a Shane Waldron offense that uses multiple tight ends? Sure. Or it can be a Roma Dunze type if they're lucky enough at ninth overall. Yep. Pick one, pick nine. They also have $54 million in effective cap space, nearly 55. And just quickly for the, all, the, all the people out there that aren't educated on effective cap space, it's signing the number. It, it, let's put it this way. It is the amount of cap space a team will have when they have 51 players under contract and also, it's projected rookie class under contract as well. So that $55 million can be spent in a whole bunch of places. And one that it will be is on Jalen Johnson. Uh, his name was floated last year, the cornerback at the trade deadline. Obviously, the Bears were somewhat shockingly buyers at the deadline. It definitely worked out with Montez Sweat to go along with that contract. And Jalen Johnson has recently stated his desire to reset the cornerback market, uh, which would put him north of $21 million per year. Yeah, they. I think he's so good that it would be a disaster if they yeah. actually had to leave. So I think he'll be back. Um, Justin Jones as a defensive tackle, he actually led the defensive line and run defensive snaps. He's a free agent, so that's why I have defensive tackle listed. Their center, he's a free agent. Lucas Patrick, kind of a low-end starter. So I do think that to help Caleb Williams, whoever the quarterback is, getting him a long-term center option is a, a big deal. And then Yannick Ngakwe, he's a free agent. Uh, Demarcus Walker, he's 30 years old. So the edge depth behind Montez Sweat is lacking a little bit. Um, when I went back to so overall in general, I think the Bears are like competitive immediately if they get the quarterback right. Uh, their defensive line uh, lacks depth, but they were awesome against the run, and they got pressure at the late part of the season because of Montez Sweat, because the linebackers that they got the last offseason really paid off. The team needs for the Washington Commanders, who are picking number two overall, quarterback, Edge, outside corner, wide receiver, speed at running back, strong safety, and left guard. This is a team that basically tanked down the stretch. They got rid of both of their edge rushers. That's why it's the number two need. Kendall Fuller, a uh, veteran corner on the outside. He's a free agent. They Remember, they drafted Emmanuel Forbes, so maybe they're ready to make him a full-time player. But obviously, none of that stuff matters until they get the quarterback position right. I think it will be... Uh, Drake May, I think there's a, a difference between Drake May and the Jaden Daniels tier. I don't think that they're going to be able to move up for Caleb Williams, who's 
more or less the consensus quarterback one at this point. So get Drake may, hopefully he's very good. And then you have to reassess the entire defense. They were one of the worst defenses in the secondary. And then at the end of the season on the defensive line, just because they traded away their top two tackles. And then lastly, I think the other note here, Antonio Gibson, he's out of there. Brian Robinson's a good power rusher. They need some speed right. back there. But I think even before that, Curtis Samuel, your guy in the slot, he's a free agent. Will they move Jahan Dotson back into the slot? Is he an outside receiver? They just need one more body. Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson are a decent one too, but they can use a little bit more juice for Drake May. We've already done a video on the top 10 free agents at every single position, over 100,000 views already on that video. So as you know, you need to subscribe to the channel to check these out. Uh, I advocated for Curtis Samuel to be even higher on that list. He probably will be when we get to mm -hmm. some of these names that aren't going to make for agency. So sure, obviously the commanders have the most effective cap space in the NFL at nearly $62 million. Um, every single one of these teams is also going to have wide receiver need. I will say the commanders are in a position probably better than almost any other of these bad squads having Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson out there as pass catchers i'm i'm highly intrigued on what this team does because it's not just the head coach it was what the decision makers in the front office that were attached to him they was all like kind of this one organism that functioned to spearhead everything over the last few years with ron rivera and marty herney and everyone else um and when that happens you have players in the roster that they drafted that either you know, the new eyeballs, the new brains do like, or they just instantly want to yeah. move on from. And right. so this is a clean slate, albeit not exactly the type of project that it seemed like the top head coaching candidates wanted to attack and to attach themselves to. But man, I look at this roster and, and Hayden, I, I really like it. I, I really yeah. do, especially on the offensive side and then the maneuverability that you can have outside of it. It's it's a easy reset button. And I'm excited to see what the commanders do this offseason with that. To your point, four of the five offensive linemen return. Uh, their left guard is one of these that is a free agent. Are they very good on offensive line? Not really, well, but they're at least back and they like kept things afloat for the most part. Totally. And, you know, when I looked at Cliff Kingsbury as the hire, what instantly jumped to mind is, okay, who's going to be his offensive line coach and who's going to be his run game coordinator? Uh, they have made those hires. Some Commanders fans are a little less inspired by that because I believe it was the old Giants offensive line coach who is coming in and yeah, it it's going to be fascinating <laughs> to watch. I do think Sam Cosme is that building block. who can be a right sure. guard and maybe even move out to right tackle. But obviously they paid Andrew Wiley last off season. And then Charles Leno uh, has started for a long time being a seventh round pick, but he's uh, very much on the wrong side of, of 30. And then what Dan Quinn had in Dallas, um, he has pieces here in really solid veterans in John Allen and Deron Payne, but you know, none of them are Micah Parsons no. and how he used, let's say lighter personnel groupings more than anyone else. Again, he has a stable of money that maybe he can turn some of these mediocre free agents out there into significant role players for mm -hmm. his team. And obviously hitting on draft picks is essential as well. Yep. Okay. That means pick three goes to the new England Patriots. Their team needs, according to Hayden Winks, quarterback, left tackle, right tackle, tight end, outside wide receiver, strong safety, and edge. Short list there, Hayden. You've got to get the entire uh, offense ready, and that kind of brings us to the discussion with the third overall pick. Do you throw the quarterback in there and hope that he can figure things out and not get killed out there, or do you go with a trade down, try to assess the rest of this roster, or do you just take the best wide receiver prospect? I think there's arguments for all of those. The offensive line just has to get back. Uh, Trent Trent Brown, he's a free agent. Last year, according to ESPN's pass block win rate, with Trent Brown and Michael Nwenu, also uh, a free agent, they were dead last in that category. You can't have that. Both their tight ends are free agents in Hunter Henry and Mike Kosicki. I don't think we cared about any of these uh, wide receivers. If we did, maybe it was Pop Douglas in the slot. So definitely need an outside wide receiver, even with Juju, Devontae Parker, and type one Thornton back. Those are all just depth pieces. So uh, this team needs everything. At least the defense yeah. is really good. I know all you sickos that tune into free agent lists out there and trying to fix your own teams and not necessarily Patriots fans know who Mike Unwinu is. Um, but for the casuals out there, it's going to be shocking maybe for them how much money he makes a season if he does not get the franchise tag. And Mike Reese already mentioned that Unwinu 
or Kyle Duggar are both options here. Mm -hmm. To me, if I am sitting back and building a roster and trying to especially start from scratch with a new head coach, new decision makers in the front office, and a new quarterback at the helm, I go with the offensive lineman more so than the versatile athletic safety. And I think if you re rewind a couple of years, and again, I can't put myself in the exact same situation without the cap space wasn't so on and so forth. But the Patriots obviously have to regret letting someone like Joe Tooney walk. I'm not necessarily comparing the talents of Unwino and Joe Tooney, especially their styles of play, but they can't let that happen again, you know? And and Unwino to me is someone you have to keep. And it wouldn't be shocking at all if they do use the franchise tag on him versus letting him test the market and someone paying him the most offensive right. money out there. I think they would eat the freshest way. Make sure Trent Brown doesn't leave. Make sure that when who's back, see if you can find a right guard, right tackle that you like there. And then you can go hunting for the quarterback versus wide receiver right. debate, which we don't need to have on the show. Yeah. And Josh Uche is an interesting name too, for sure. because Gerard Mayo obviously steps in as the full-time head coach. Um, obviously Bill and Steve were kind of in control of that defense from a certain degree. And Josh Uche has always been one of these like sporadic role players and maybe he goes on to another team and like has an awesome career right. or maybe Gerard Mayo liked him a bit more than the Belichick's did. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm intrigued to see, again, these are the types of decisions we see when, you know, new people are in charge versus the long time regimes and hive minds. I just don't want them to do like Jaden Daniels and not have any of the players around them. Like, and then you're in a Bryce young thing. Where, so if you're going to oh, pick a side, pick, pick the offensive side, like Nick Rudman, I send a mock draft, a seven round mock draft, just the Patriots. <laughs> and I had one defensive player. He's like, no defensive players, just more offense, please. Right. Uh, <laughs> we'll save again, mock draft conversation for later right. this week or early next week. Just check the channel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up while you're there too. Okay. For the Arizona Cardinals at pick number four edge defensive tackle outside corners both of them outside wide receivers both of them uh linebacker and left guard give me the details the defense was just horrific they were 28th in pass rush win rate they have bj ojolari he's just kind of a speed rusher i think they want some size at edge same thing with defensive tackle they can't rush the passer they can't stop the run remember this is uh, a staff coming from the eagles they drafted a bunch of front seven players especially on the defensive line a bunch both of their outside corners are probably not on the uh, roster right now, as a reminder, passing EPA allowed, they were 31st. The Cardinals defense, everyone knows this, was horrific. They need players at all three of those spots. And then, of course, outside wide receiver, Marquise Brown is a free agent. If he can't get re-signed, this would go way up. Uh, obviously, they're right in the position to draft Marvin Harrison. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze at fourth overall. And then you start attacking uh, edge, defensive tackle, and corner both with the free agency and then the rest of the draft. We'll get to the T Higgins, Michael Pittman's Calvin Ridley's Mike Evans of the world. Mm -hmm. um, Marquise Hollywood Brown is the first name that I'm just uncertain of, of what his future is with his team. Not because of his talent. I think you and I can watch his tape and be like, Oh, he has juice. A lot of teams are going to want that juice. Mm -hmm. Then you also can look at the injury history, especially with the foot, the toe, whatever it is, the heel and say, okay, he, has barely been on the field constantly for this team and been a constant presence because of that. So mm -hmm. is he going to take like a one year prove it deal or is again, a team going to look and say, Oh man, he has speed. <laughs> we need speed. Let's give him a bunch of money. Cause there's no other free agent wide receivers with a bunch of speed. I will say the Cardinals are like 10th with about $30.5 million in effective cap space. I think what this team took over from the Steve, Steve Kime, Cliff Kingsbury era was weak in a bunch of spots. I mean, yeah. we, we can obviously look back at Steve Kime and poke fun at his tendency to draft linebacker safety hybrids and then edge linebacker hybrids, and they all do better elsewhere. Um, I will say Jonathan Gannon for choo -choo -choo explosives uh, really got his guys going and playing to probably the best of their abilities. And I'm excited mm -hmm. to see, and hopefully they can turn the page and start hitting on some of these talents. Cause when they do, I was actually intrigued by this coaching staff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they got Trey McBride going, yes. speaking explosive. So, yeah, I, I would love to see Marquise Brown on a prove-it deal, Marvin Harrison, Trey McBride with a healthier Kyler Murray. We'll see what happens. Pick five. Los Angeles Chargers. Hayden's team needs defensive tackle, corner, center, free safety, tight end, right tackle, linebacker, edge, right guard, running back. Hayden, are you a bit shocked that Tom Telesco immediately got another general manager gig? <laughs> 
<laughs> he treated me well. I like Tom Telesco. Uh, nice dude. Uh, but th- doing this exercise, you really see like which teams are like getting close to compete and then which yeah. ones are windows to win are real, ladies and gentlemen, hundred percent. And the chargers window to win is not yet. So they have the fifth overall pick. I believe this is a trade down team potentially just because of all of these things they need. Like, uh, we're talking about defensive tackles. They were 29th in pass rush win win rate. Both of their top uh, two starters last year, they're both free agents. Defense tackle has always been a problem recently. Michael Davis, that's one of their starting corners. Uh, he was an inconsistent player. He's a free agent. It's just Asante Samuel Jr. Right now, remember, they were 26 in passing EPA allowed. Uh, Corey Lindsley, their starter uh, at center, he is retiring most likely. The, their fill-in replacement, he's a free agent. Their safeties are free agents. Gerald Everett's a free agent at tight end. Uh, right tackle, they try to invest into Trey Pimpkins as a kind of a developmental player. Kind of been inconsistent. I think they, they're going to look for an upgrade there. And we haven't gotten to like the running backs, Austin Eckler and stuff. Right. Like This team needs everything. I would guess that Harbaugh, if it was up to him, he wants to build this inside out. Yeah. That's why I think I can see offensive line, defensive line here to start. But corner, man, they don't have anybody at corner either. And that doesn't even touch on, you know, the Joey Bosa's, Cleo Max, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, so on and so forth of the world that right now the Chargers are $45 million over the cap in effective cap space. Um, we've talked about that a little bit. And again, I will say some combination of Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Josh Palmer, Rashawn Slater mm-hmm. is enough to have a successful offense in year one of yes. Harbaugh. Um, but beyond that, this is a project to build unless you just nail your draft picks, yeah. um, the rest of the roster. And that's fine. Like you can have a competitive offense or that selection and just hope injury luck is on your side. So on and so forth. I I'm with you early on. I saw a lot of people suggesting wide receiver here at pick number five. The more I think about it and the more I think of Harbaugh, it's like, I can't get offensive line or tight end out of my brain. And again, inside out like build the spine build the toughness build that mentality and then add those other pieces as you go along Mm, yeah completely agree and also corner they have nobody at corner right now that's a pretty big position uh it is okay pick six this is the new york giants team needs x wide receiver left guard right guard defensive tackle outside corner running back slot corner right tackle and then quarterback to end this list I think quarterback at the end of this, uh, I think that there is options to upgrade over Daniel Jones, but they're so committed to him. Uh, $47 million cap hit this year and then $22 million in guaranteed bonuses the following year. So them like trying to do that this year probably is a little bit rich in a year early. Um, X receiver, this is what they need. I think that they've ma- made some finds and Wandale Robinson in the slot. I think he's a perfectly fine slot wide receiver. Jalen Hyatt in a rotation at Z. Uh, Daniel Jones, when we talked to him, he was talking up Jalen Hyatt a little bit better at the catch point than what people want to give him credit for. But they don't have like an X receiver. Like the Darren Waller project, that has not uh, come through yet. So like Roma Dunze at six overall would yeah. make a lot of sense. But also... Daniel Jones has been running for his life for years. Left guard, right guard, both of them are free agents. And then right tackle, Evan Neal, seventh overall pick. It, I think it's too early in his career to like upgrade the right tackle spot, especially when the guard positions are both free agents. But, but he's you almost have to like build around him in a way. Right, right. So I think it's, you got to try to see, they, they made this investment in Daniel Jones, at least give him a chance coming off yeah. a torn ACL. Uh, so I think offensive line and then X wide receiver in particular. You mentioned Daniel Jones. We sat down with him in Las Vegas. Colt McCoy and I did to talk through uh, a big comeback victory against the Arizona Cardinals uh, at the start of last season, week two. Um, I asked him about Jalen Hyatt, as you mentioned, and what he needs to do in order to be a full-time player. Because Hayden, when we talked about the Dayball-Kafka connection, it just felt like the 2022 version is not who they wanted to be in terms of, oh, just athletic quarterback and we're going to win like in the fine margins of the game. They want to expand the field a bit more. And that just really didn't happen. I think a lot of it stemmed from starting off with, you know, offensive line injuries, namely Andrew Thomas, and that tanked everything else. Then you got two quarterback injuries, then you got two pass catcher injuries, and it just malfunctioned. Um, Selecting, and we'll talk about it, selecting a wide receiver in the spot would be able, like, allow them to stress more areas of the defense and like maybe be more of a vertical Mm -hmm. passing game. By the way, did you see, I think it was CD lamb on someone's podcast, hyping up Wondell. He he, he must be one of these people on Twitter, part of the fantasy community that loves them some Wondell. 
yeah, CD plays uh, Dynasty uh, football, apparently. <laughs> um, the last few notes I had, uh, they traded Leonard Williams. They need another defensive tackle. Obviously, Dexter Lawrence is a monster, but more of a three-tech is a big a big need for them. Outside corner, Adoree Jackson, he's a free agent. New system in place after getting rid of Wink there as well. So those are two pretty big positions. And that just leads me to Saquon Barkley. This team needs too much other things to like try to focus on Saquon Barkley. I think it's time to walk. Please go to the Houston Texans. That would be a lot more fun. Well, we'll talk about them in a moment. Tennessee Titans are here at seventh. Your team needs outside corner, center, nose tackle, edge, left tackle, power running back, wide receiver. Some of those positions will be brought back. Some of them will not. Hit me with the details. So both of their starting outside corners uh, are free agents. That's Sean Murphy Bunning, Christian Fulton. They were 30th in passing EPA allowed out there. So I think that cornerback is a bigger need than people want to give credit for. They're starting center. He's a free agent. They lost both of their uh, nose tackles, uh, Kyle Pecco. They released Tyre Tart at the end of last season as well. Uh, edge rushers become a problem for them too. So I think defensive line and corner has been their massive, massive needs. And then on top of that, they're going to have this debate. Andre Dillard. He failed last year. They're bringing in legendary Bill Callahan uh, to coach with his son. Is Dillard a project or is he an immediate replacement? I think that's going to be one of the decisions at seventh overall because you have a bunch of left tackle options there. And then you go to Derrick Henry's a free agent. So are they ready to let Tiger Spears be a true number one? Do they want somebody with a little bit more power? And then wide receiver, both Traylon Burks and DeAndre Hopkins are back. Are those long-term answers? I don't think so. And there's some really good wide receivers at seventh overall. So even though I listed corner and center and nose tackle ahead, I do think the seventh overall pick probably is going to be a left tackle or wide receiver. We'll see which one they choose. Yeah. Corner's interesting because in 2020, they spent a second round pick on Christian Fulton, who is now going to be a free agent. Then the next season, they spent a first round pick on Caleb Farley, who's, you know, dealt with injuries, did the same thing. I believe at Virginia tech, um, had some unfortunate off the field stuff happen as well. So it's not like one of those positions. I mean, you can say the same thing about their right tackle spot. Isaiah Wilson was a first round pick. Like we, I love talking about Mike Vrabel as elevating the talent, giving some, his team identity, you know, a, a culture. Um, it's obviously a swerve in a very different direction now with Brian Callahan. I will push back on a little bit on the idea that they might bring in another running back. Um, I, understand that Tajay Spears is much smaller than Derrick Henry. And obviously we get new play callers now attached to this team, but Rand Carthon brought him in. I do mm -hmm. wonder if that vision, as we saw in fourth quarters, that Derrick Henry second halves that Derrick Henry did miss Tajay Spears being like a complete three down yeah. back. But I do understand the power element of, Hey, short yardage. Someone else might can come in because obviously Tajay Spears can do just about everything else. Yeah, they have way bigger problems than running back right now. So if, if it is a power back, it'll probably be like fifth round or something like that. Yeah. And we're still waiting for that uh, Traylon Burks uh, progression. One That's more year. <laughs> Atlanta Falcons. I mean, totally new staff. They're picking eighth overall. Quarterback, edge rusher, corner, defensive tackle, and wide receiver. Right now, the Atlanta Falcons have $19.2 million in effective cap space. When I was going through, this is one of the teams I was like, they got a lot more good players than I think Except. people want to give credit for. But you got to get the quarterback, right? And also Ed Rusher. By the way, uh, they were dead last in pass rush win rate. Bud Dupree, he's a free agent. So Edge is just like as big of a need yeah. as you can possibly fill up what's new there with the Falcons. But obviously it comes down to quarterback play. I don't know if they're going to go the veteran route or the rookie route. It does seem like J.J. McCarthy's kind of in this eighth overall range now maybe Jaden Daniels in a trade up as well or is it Zach Robinson who's kind of just worked with like pure pocket passers does he consider Baker Mayfield Russell Wilson Ryan Tannehill one of those types but this team doesn't matter unless they can rush the passer and throw the football but I will say the rest of the roster pretty damn good yeah Terry Fontenot recently quote quarterback is a top priority for us this offseason that is a change versus what we have seen with Arthur's also the obvious and company. <laughs> I will add they did attempt the Deshaun Watson and that kind of like crumbled everything. Cause then Matt Ryan asked and requested for a trade and so on and so forth. Anyways, there are very few teams drafting inside the top 10 that have premier players at pivotal positions. And Drake London is that, and will be that 
Obviously, you bring back your entire offensive line, which is stunning. Um, obviously, a group that played a little bit worse in 2023 than they did in 2022. Um, Raheem Morris is not going to call the defense. Jimmy Lake is, as we've talked about on previous episodes. Um, but, you know, together, maybe they, like Ryan Nielsen did last year, can get more out of the talents that they have. But, mm -hmm. again, I, I'm excited for this team if they nail the quarterback. But if they yes. don't, because, like, one or two or three of these teams is going to be left like in musical chairs, yes. be left without a seat, and then they have to look towards you know the twenty twenty five season. Um, I'm hoping the Falcons are not one of those, and I bet how Arthur Blank has been aggressive in the mm -hmm. past, i.e., with Deshaun Watson, who probably do so this year. Albeit, none of these quarterbacks are thought of to that level right now. It feels like there's just more pressure on the Falcons to make a move there. Um, real quick, just because everyone talks about the quarterback, the Falcons just hit in some other positions. Jeff Okuda, he was brought in to be uh, next to AJ Terrell. He was okay, but he's also a free agent. So corner is a need uh, opposite of Terrell. And then defensive tackle, Calais Campbell, he's a free agent. And then Grady Jarrett, who we both love, oh. uh, coming off torn ACL. So defensive tackle is also a need there. And then name another wide receiver uh, behind Drake London, I guess Kyle Pitts. Matt Collins. Um, he's, he's a free agent. Free agent, right. Uh, <laughs> again, again from Terry Fontenot, quote, we're not going to close any doors, be it trades, for agency, the draft. We will make sure we keep an open mind there, and we're going to attack it and make sure we get it right. And that's about the quarterback. So, Hayden, again, this is one that they are going to make an investment. I just wonder if they might be too aggressive in that approach based on the players that we have available right now, or they get it right, you know? And if they get the it right, the game. like yeah. if they get it right, they are the team to beat probably in the NFC South. Yeah. And they don't have to get it that right to make Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and Bijan right. effective. <laughs> to, to be better than uh than they were last year on that side of the ball. Okay. Next, Chicago Bears. We already talked about them in pick nine. So that brings us to pick 10. That is the New York Jets. Left tackle, right tackle, wide receiver, strong safety, and edge rusher. They tried with Makai Becton. He's a free agent. Uh, they were 30th in pass block win rate. They were 30th in rushing EPA. Left tackle is a problem. The Jets rotated five players at right tackle, including Elijah Vera Tucker, who was drafted as a guard, who's coming off of, uh, a torn Achilles again. So it's just going to be the left tackles, right tackles. They need both of them. Good news at 10th overall, there's like four or five different options for them. So they will attack that early on. Then beyond that, Garrett Wilson needs somebody um, behind him. And then Jordan Whitehead, he's a free agent. That's strong safety. Bryce Huff, who's just all gas on at the edge. He's a free agent, though. They have some other bodies out there. But this stops and ends at left tackle, right tackle. Obviously, everyone knows that. Part of me wonders with, and let's be honest, the list that Aaron Rodgers gave Joe Douglas and Robert Sala last offseason, if that way of building the roster continues because let's face it outside of Woody Johnson, it appears that Aaron Rodgers is like the second most powerful member of the jets organization at this point. Um, if that list starts with David Bakhtiari this off season. Now I know that some might laugh at that idea, but I would have laughed at, you know, the Randall Cobbs of the world paying Alan Lazard that much money, Dalvin cook, as we're winding up training camp, you know, these have been laughable acquisitions in the past. Right. Dave Bakhtiari is fantastic. Dave Bakhtiari has also played 13 games over the last three seasons. Um, so unless, unless he has literally just been refusing to play in a way and just healing, which I, I don't think he would. He's obviously one of the best left tackles in the league when out there. Uh, I don't know how you can make that as, oh, left tackle is good to go. Um, no, you can, there was you, you there was rumors can't. that there was rumors that Bakhtiar wasn't playing like on turf, like right period. So the Jets turf yeah. notorious. <laughs> uh, and as for Bryce Huff, by the way, I always look towards last year's drafts and because it to me, it, it gives you a window into the mind of what future cap decisions might be like. And obviously selecting will mcdonald in the first round uh, a guy who was inactive for some yeah. regular season games to me indicates that okay it's going to be john franklin myers jermaine johnson and probably will mcdonald as yes. like the three players at edge and despite bryce up being a really fun player and even though he, what had 50 percent of snaps or something last season mm -hmm. he'll probably be moving on 
I agree with that for sure. Okay. Pick 11, Minnesota Vikings. Things get fun here. Yes, they do. Quarterback, number one need. Then edge, then corner, left guard, linebacker, slot wide receiver, running back, and then free safety. Talk to me. So Kirk Cousins is a free agent. Um, there's nothing like contractually that makes the Vikings more of a favorite to sign him than anybody else aside just the familiarity. But we'll see if this kind of newer staff going into their third year wants Kirk Cousins uh, after like not doing the option route with him. If they don't like Kirk Cousins, JJ McCarthy to me would be an excellent fit in that offense as well. So at 11th overall, they're kind of in the spot to trade up or if McCarthy falls to them there. Um, and then beyond that, edge rusher, uh, both are top edges, and including Daniil Hunter finally hitting free agency. They were only 18th in pass rush win rate last year, even with Daniil Hunter. Uh, Brian Flores was just excellent at either dropping eight or blitzing or stunting, doing a bunch of different things on the defense. But I think he was uh, kind of hiding their cornerback play in general, and then also their edge play uh, to some degree. So I think those are like the two primary positions aside from corn uh, quarterback. And then Dalton Reisner, their left guard, he's a free agent. We really like this coaching staff. Kevin O'Connor offensively, obviously keeping Brian Flores on the defensive side and how his defense, despite having an, not a ton of superstars, if any, um, he was able to get like role players playing at a pretty high level and it gelled as the season went along. And Kevin O'Connell, I mean, I think enough said. Beast. One of our favorites. Yeah. Um, I also think Kevin O'Connell has a heavier hand than people realize in personnel decisions on this team. And maybe one of the head coaches who's at near the top of that list across the league. Um, I see a lot of it out there that people just assuming that Kirk Cousins is coming back to this team. I wouldn't be as 100% sure of that happening. We mentioned last offseason that... Um, the Vikings were interested in trading up for a quarterback. I will add that trading into the top four picks for one of those top three quarterbacks, it turned out to be impenetrable. No one was right. moving out of their slots, basically, um, especially to where how far down you had to move for the Vikings. So now you're picking earlier at pick 11 with the Minnesota Vikings. I don't know how possible it would be to get to like the third selection if you love the third quarterback mm -hmm. on that list or – if Kevin O'Connell will fall in love with one of those other second or even third tier quarterbacks on top of it. But um, Kevin O'Connell to me does not want to do this year to year thing anymore. And he probably yeah. wants to have his, his guy at that position. And I think that he might look at himself at his roster at Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison and Brian Flores attached to him and say, Hey, we're not picking earlier than number 11 no. for a long time. So now's the time for us to make our move. Yeah. I would not be surprised at, at all. So like initially I was kind of like on why wouldn't they keep Kirk cousins, but there's nothing contractually that makes him like or another team, not throw even more money than the Vikings would be willing to. There's no franchise tag at play or anything like that. Okay. Denver Broncos are at pick 12. The team needs that you list include quarterback edge rusher center defensive tackle free safety and outside corner. They just don't have a lot of capital to fill these needs once they make uh, Russell Wilson a post June 1st release to kind of spread his cap dollars. Remember, that would be $34 million in dead money this year, $50 million in dead money in 2025. They just don't have a lot to work with. So with the quarterback spot, um, Benjamin Albright's like throwing out like Sam Darnold, Mac Jones, those type of guys there. See if you can hit on a Baker Jared Mayfield. Jared coming back? Right. It's one of those types. And then maybe... A rookie. Uh, I mean, to be honest, him, they they kind of have to take the approach that the Bucks did last year. Yeah, with Tom Brady, and then I think the Bucks had like sixty million dollars in dead cap, if not more than that. And so now, arguably, are there Baker Mayfields out there that you can get in free agency this year? Maybe not, but Sam Darnold or someone of that ilk yeah. might be the closest thing to it this year, and just trust in Sam Sean Payton to pick the right one. I remember when Sean Payton was doing um, the broadcasting stuff, he was a fan of Mac Jones. Mac Jones is apparently out of there. If that could be a backup option there. They just don't have a lot. They're not trying to win the Super Bowl this year. They just can't based off of their cap situation. Behind, behind that, edge rusher is a massive one. They were 30th in pass rush win rate. Uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, their center, he's a free agent. So obviously it's going to be a new center, new quarterback duo. That's going to be a, kind of a scary thing to start. And then some other free agents down the list here. But edge and quarterback are just so massive. I think that they have to start there. 
Yeah, to me, they need to re-sign Lord Cushenberry again. We talked about all those positions on our uh, top 10 for agents at every single position. And yeah, I mean, an edge, they even tried a couple of years ago with a Randy Gregory and giving him that contract that the Dallas Cowboys did not. And then obviously it didn't work and shipped him on up no. to San Francisco. Yeah. So let's just say the personnel decisions haven't really worked out for the Denver yeah. Broncos as of late. Las Vegas Raiders are next at pick number 13. For you, you have quarterback topping the list, then defensive tackle, right tackle, center, right guard, and running back. So those last four positions, the offensive line and then running back, they're just all free agents, uh, the starters. Uh, I think they'll try to retain most of them. They have some flexibility at cap space, especially after this Jimmy G suspension really quick uh, based off the PEDs. Uh, that will eliminate the guarantees. That's $11 million. The Raiders right. will be happy for that. Uh, Jimmy G is also not going to get that money back based on how his career has kind of uh, ended. Um, quarterback, I don't know which way they're going to go. Luke Getze, there's, there was just another clip. They asked him again about Justin Fields. Every time Getze talks about Justin Fields, he talks about how mature he is, how much he's rooting for him, how much they, they liked working with each other. That's an option. If not, maybe they go with the Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, type of territory i don't know what they're gonna do because it's a completely new uh kind of staff here we don't know right. who exactly is calling the shots here if it's telesco pierce if it's davis who knows who it's gonna be it might even just be max crosby for all we know um and so i think quarterback and then uh defensive tackle their top three guys are all free agents uh just some aggregating of you know, newsmakers out there from Jeremy Fowler of ESPN quote, the Raiders are comfortable with Aiden O'Connell at quarterback, but will almost assuredly bring in help. So sure. the help is an interesting, that makes it like almost an even talent that they have a competition. And that doesn't necessarily indicate someone above that, but mm -hmm. obviously this is February 20th when we're recording this video and those things can drastically change. And to your point, um, with Antonio Pierce, all he has talked about is, hey, we're going to run the football and play awesome defense. Yeah. You basically, your right tackle, center, and right guard are really important to that. And as is that fourth free agent in Josh Jacobs. But let's also remember what happened with Josh Jacobs last year when they franchise tagged him. Then he sat out the entire offseason program, training camp, the entire preseason before getting $1.7 million on top of the tag that he got mm -hmm. last year. So to me, he would not be a happy camper. Maybe that was a Josh McDaniels effect, but right. he will not be a happy camper if he gets tagged once again. I know Pierce loves uh, Josh Jacobs for what it's totally. worth. Uh, I went back just, just to kind of reiterate the Russell Wilson. He's going to sign a, a guaranteed very minimum contract based off the Austin language. I went back. Remember the, the when he had that list on teams he was willing to get yeah, traded yeah, yeah, to? Yeah, of course. The Raiders were on it. Interesting. Interesting. I, I, you're almost working as Russell Wilson's. So he's awesome. going somewhere. Count, count the, the list of top 32 quarterbacks. Russell Wilson's on there and he's $1 million. Who wants them? New Orleans Saints pick 14. Decent list here for a team that, you know, right now is a uh, $87.7 million over the cap. Oh, it effect. doesn't matter, Josh. That's what they tell me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, they also need to fill or re-sign these positions. Edge, defensive tackle, left guard, wide receiver, right tackle, and cornerback. You know, just some important positions there. They basically just keep restructuring or extending players that have no business being restructured. Like, for example, like Michael Thomas last year was one of them. Michael Thomas will be out of there. Uh, Nick Underhill from New Orleans. The football, best. just absolutely the best. He floated out there that they might have to trade Marshawn Lattimore for cap space. I mean, that's a that's a good player at a premium position. So for those that don't think the cap matters, that's something that's out there. But the new thing with the Saints is they're bad in the trenches. Like, we have not said that for a very long time. They were 31st in pass rush win rate. That's why I list edge rusher as a number one uh, need. Defensive tackle, the same thing there. And then Ryan Ramchek, there's like retirement concerns based off of his uh, knee, and then they also have uh, their left guard. He's a fringe starter in the in the end of his year or of his contract as well. So the trenches, man, for the Saints, that's the problem right now. Underhill also mentioned that with Clint Kubiak coming in, quote, he isn't going to change the Saints running scheme. He's going to evolve it. Um, obviously, Gary Kubiak wide outside zone has long time been a thing, which is you know somewhat different than what Alvin Kamara has been running for the saints for quite some time. Um, yeah, I mean, this feels like the end of the road for kicking the can. 
Let's put it that way. They for the kicked it for a while. Yeah. And on top of that, you're attached to a quarterback that your fan base does not like. And um, because of their con- because of their status right, right now, they had to extend him again. So. Right. Right. So I honestly do not know what goes on with the Saints this year. And uh, I'll be very intrigued to see how they trot out there from, let's say, like the 20th to the 53rd player yeah. on their roster. Uh, and if, you know, the Marshawn Lattimore lever has to be pulled in order just to compensate for the other stuff. Because Trevor Penning, obviously, at left tackle, who, you know, they trade up for not working out in terms of being the starter. I believe he was inactive towards the end of last season. Okay. Indianapolis Colts are next here at pick 15. Decent list for them. Hayden, defensive tackle, slot corner, outside corner, edge, strong safety, right guard, outside wide receiver. Uh, Many, many of those positions will probably be re-signed and returned because the Colts right now are fifth in effective cap space at $54.7 million. It was fewer needs than I was expecting going into this kind of process just because like I listed outside wide receiver. That's I Michael Pittman's going to be back. I think they can upgrade okay. on Alec Pierce, but a lot of their premium positions, they kind of got it on lock uh, defensive tackle. They're going to be missing Grover Stewart and Taven Bryant. They're, those are both free agents. So they need DeForest Buckner uh, with a new running mate up there. Kenny Moore slot corner. He's a free agent. I think that he can resign just because he's been there his entire career. Um, the top four outside corners for the Colts last year um, were all first or second year players. I don't think they were very good, but there's a room for maybe like a veteran to come in there, kind of help out this young core. But it's not like the most glaring need as well. Like, I think the Colts are in a pretty good position to oh, retain yeah. a lot of their, their current free agents and then hopefully hit on this kind of mid round pick and see what happens with Anthony Richardson. I mean, what we're going to see from Anthony Richardson is just fantastic stuff. In my opinion, they are so excited. Franny Richardson, so excited. Mm-hmm. Did you know this? The Colts haven't used the franchise tag since 2013. Wow. Do you know who that was on? Oh, man. Pat McAfee. <laughs> did, not, did not know that one. <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously wow. Chris Ballard, who has gone through like a metamorphosis this year, maybe when he shows with the NFL Combine, he will no longer have the long hair and the beard. You and him have kind of gone through your own hair journeys this year. Yeah, I'm still way. on a hair journey. Uh, I want the mullet <laughs> back. Um, I, I, here, I got one more for you. You're okay. quizzing me. Where were the Colts last year in pass rush win rate? Talking about the edge rushers. Well, I mean, if I read through your notes right here, they were fifth. <laughs> they were fifth. How many people would think the Colts quitty pay? Yeah. Samson Ebukam. Yeah. Hello. I will say Chris Ballard loves him some athletes. Anytime you're looking for first, second, third, whatever, pass rushers, defense tackles, offensive linemen. I mean, Breland from BYU was one of these names. Um, he loves him some athletes, which which I appreciate. Adi Adi was drafted by this team last year, yeah. got in some rotational reps. Um, and yeah, I mean, Grover Stewart and, as you mentioned, uh, Taven Bryan are like vastly different players. He took a shot in Taven Bryan after he was a first-round pick by the Jaguars. That guy doesn't know where the football is on any given snap, but Grover Stewart is more of like a um, thick run stopping defensive tackle. So the Colts are one of my favorite teams because obviously Shane Sykin is the real deal. I cannot wait for this team in 2024. Yeah. I'm, I know you mentioned Michael Pittman and I think on Twitter, you also talked about Alec Pierce and I think you maybe got some blowback being like, Oh, Alec Pierce and Anthony Richardson, their uh, strengths align perfectly. I would say just improving on Alec Pierce would be a better thing because if you get Michael Pittman, Josh downs and one other dude that can create separation, we are cooking, sir. There are a lot of kind of second, third round wide receivers in this class that could win on a straight line. Let's just draft one of them and see who's better between him and Alec Pierce. Right. Instead of just, yeah. just a contested downfield player. And that's all he can do. Okay. Seattle Seahawks are here at pick 16. Defense tackle, linebacker, center, left guard, tight end, edge, and right tackle. Uh, going back to the top of the list, Hayden, defensive tackle. Leonard Williams finds himself in this situation once again, I believe it's the same thing we got traded from the Jets, the Giants, where they're going to have to pay him because they sent a second round pick in the opposite direction. Yeah, I had the same takeaway. It's just such a big position that if he does walk, that would be a glaring need. But I do think that they'll keep him back. Both starting linebackers, Jordan Brooks, Bobby Wagner, are both uh, free agents. I think that they'll keep Brooks at least. We'll see what happens with yeah. uh, pro bowler Bobby Wagner. Uh, their center and their left guard are both free agents. I think that's kind of one of these positions. Like in my mock draft, 
I had them going with the Oregon Center. Uh, new offense, they just need to keep the interior in play. That's, I think, what was the root of the problems. Why Gino's stats were a little bit down is the right tackle got hurt, and then yeah. the interior, like they've tried with a couple different guys at the guards in the center spot. They just have not hit that position yet. So um, I think that's one of the most underrated positions for the Seahawks. Anything you want to say about Ryan Grubb, their new yes. office coordinator who didn't come along with Mike McDonald. Mike McDonald was actually reaching into college because Ryan Grubb was with Washington, then traveled with the head coach mm -hmm. to Alabama, and then now has immediately gotten another contract uh, and let's say promotion. He just wants to air it out. You know, they were like among the the leaders in their kind of just pass rate. Um, and then also when they do pass it, they also threw the ball deeper downfield than almost every team. It's hard to kind of pick apart. Is that a Michael Penix thing who has great arm talent? Is it a Romo Dunze and Jalen Polk thing winning downfield and contested? Or is this just what the coaching staff wants to do? Either way, I think that they can pass the ball a ton here. So maybe the Kenneth Walker and uh, Zach Charbonnet stuff goes down. And they just try to air this thing out with Lockett and DK Metcalf. Now, but I want to draft a lot of Metcalf right now. So does bringing Ryan Grubb to change maybe the direction they could go with Tyler Lockett? Because I've seen him mentioned as a possible cut slash trade candidate based on obviously the JSN selection last right. year, even though the two skill sets don't necessarily overlap. I think that they should keep Lockett at this point. I think he's a perfect fit for exactly what Grubb wants to do. I think it's maybe even a little bit bad news for JSN just because like what Geno Smith wants to do is he wants to air it out. The coaching staff wants to air it out. They have DK Metcalf who wants to air it out. And then JSN's kind of left underneath. We'll see about that. But I do think that Geno Smith and uh, Ryan Grubb are a good pairing together as long as they have time to actually get back five-step drops and actually throw it downfield. And that's why I want them to draft the lineman early. Yeah, and obviously A. Lucas missed a good amount of time last year. They nailed Charles Cross and A. Lucas in the same draft, but those are your bookends and not necessarily the interior pieces. Um, just quickly, when watching the Mike McDonald and John Schneider press conference, I do think that there is a shift on the back end, like behind closed doors in Seattle, where forever it was John Schneider plus Pete Carroll as almost equals. This has clearly become like John Schneider's mm -hmm. team. And that's a bit of a different position than he's been in before. And who knows, maybe ownership changes in the next year or two or three, but like 2024, a ton of pressure. And I'm, I'm sure he's going to be thrilled about it and, and appreciate the challenge because um, again, it was those two almost as a, a connected piece, making all decisions together. And while Mike McDonald is a huge hire and we absolutely love it, John Schneider like has full control of mm -hmm you know, football operations. And that's a big deal. Yep, it is. But it's time for a little bit of change. Okay. Jacksonville Jaguars at pick 17. Defensive tackle, wide receiver, slot corner, left guard, center, corner, and power running back once again. So starting up front, the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars were 23rd in rushing EPA allowed. They've tried at defensive tackle, but I think just time to like make another try attempt at a splash play to kind of stop the run over there. And then with wide receiver, we've had this debate. We actually have a clip on the channel as well. What they should do with Calvin Ridley. He's technically a free agent. If they sign him to a long-term contract, that third round pick that goes to the Falcons turns into a second round. So there's some details that have come out about this okay. since we've had that conversation. That's only if they re-sign him ahead of the free agency window. If the free agency window hits when he becomes a free agent and then they re-sign him, it still stays a third round pick and doesn't okay. move up to a second round pick, which I think is a pretty significant detail on top of it. And then when we interviewed uh, Trevor Lawrence, he said that they just want more time to develop chemistry. He, right. he was like saying like, hey, think about the, being off – for two years and coming out there, he's like, I know I I know what I have in Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk. I think I can really build something with Calvin Ridley. So I think wide receiver is not going to end up being that much of a need here. Slot corner with Trey Herndon. Uh, he's a free agent. And then left guard, they tried. Remember, they traded for Ezra Cleveland. Uh, they kind of rotated. But at the end of the day, they were 29th in pass block win rate. That's why Trevor Lawrence's stats were down a little bit. They needed the field to be this much wider. And they needed their offensive linemen to pass protect for one extra second. And then I think this offense could bounce back. Yeah, I can't wait for you all to see that sit down, Colt McCoy, Trevor Lawrence, and myself talking through 
the playoff victory they had a couple years ago. Um, there's like a seven minute segment where Trevor took the iPad and talked through this play for seven minutes that in his head only was able to last for 30 seconds. That was pretty great stuff and might be some of the best content we ever put out. Yeah. So I'm excited for you all to watch that. Um, yeah, Jeremy Fowler, quote, pass rusher Josh Allen and wide receiver Calvin Ridley. Jacksonville plans to keep both as what we just talked about with Calvin Ridley. Um, that is a dangerous area to walk into because if Calvin really hits the free agent market and let's say, you know, T Higgins doesn't, Michael Pittman doesn't, Mike Evans doesn't, then Calvin really is the most talented wide receiver out there. And so technically a team mm -hmm. could come in and offer him the back, right? Mm -hmm. Could also Jacksonville, his representation, Calvin really himself be like, Hey, let's do me a solid. Here's the framework of the deal, but let's right. not sign it until yeah. free agency starts. And then until you can actually sign it, two years after, you know, when the new league year actually does start, that's a possibility on top of it. But, you know, as you even mentioned, you didn't even include edge rusher, Josh Allen, or just edge in general as a team of uh, position of need, because uh, he's going to be returning to this team. No matter yeah. what. Too good. Then they need Walker to step up though. They do. Okay. Next Cincinnati Bengals. Pick 18, right tackle, defensive tackle, tight end, slot wide receiver, outside corner, left guard and running back. Uh, from Jeremy Fowler, many around the league believe Cincinnati will franchise tag wide receiver T. Higgins and let veteran slot wide receiver Tyler Boyd walk. It makes sense. Uh, Joe Burrow, he worked his contract around so there's a little bit of cap space this year to keep T. Higgins around. Super Bowl window, give, give it one more chance here. Right tackle is a problem because they pivoted Jonah Williams from left tackle to right tackle because they added Orlando Brown last year. He's now a free agent. So I think that right tackle is a spot. Good news for them. Lots of right tackles kind of in this uh, 18th, 19th overall pick uh, where they sit at right there. Uh, tackle is a good spot to, to need. Defensive tackle, I also think is a need. We like DJ Reader, but he just tore his quad for the second time. And that just happened in December. He's 30 years old. Uh, their pass rush was not as good last year. So I think defensive tackle is a big need. And then the less important positions, both Drew Sample and Irv uh, Smith, your guy there at tackle, um, they're both free agents. And then, like you said, Tyler Boyd. So I think they're going to add somebody else as like a pass catcher um, and replace those guys. But I do think it really is right tackle, defensive tackle, and then kind of everything else. Um, there's a new follow for me on Twitter recently. I believe it's Max Toscano, who does some really good work um, on the Cincinnati Bengals, and he is hypothesizing, and maybe it's pie in the sky here at pick number 18, but filling that need at both slot wide receiver and tight end with Brock Continue. Bowers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If, if that's a possibility. And, you know, we'll see what Brock Bowers shows up at the NFL Combine, and maybe he's, you know, 235 pounds, even lighter potentially, because as we saw his frame, he is that of a not Gronk, <laughs> let's say still going through puberty type yeah. aesthetic he has. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's one where I do wonder, despite him being, you know, so highly regarded by the draft community, maybe the Bengals do trade up for something like that. Or if he can last to pick here 18, because what he can do as a pass catcher of being used in motion, being used split out wide split out in the slot, that could fill like two birds with one stone type aspect to it. And Joe Burrow throws the ball into the flats, and that's where Brock Bowers goes absolutely nuts. So I, I would love that. Um, I thought the same thing kind of with the Colts potentially too. So we'll see how far Brock uh, falls. By the way, with that picture, everyone's talking about like how skinny he is. I was just looking. Look how big his hands and how long his limbs are. Like that dude, give him a couple more years, and he's going to be an absolute problem. Yeah, and here it is. Um, I'll just throw Max up there so all you can – Follow him at the exact same time because uh, he actually does some great work out there on Twitter. He calls All him 235-pound right. Nakua, which is an interesting <laughs> comparison for Brock Bowers. And just quickly, to your point on Joe Burrow, end-of-season press conference, he simply said he expects T. Higgins back for 2024. So who knows beyond that? But again, we talk about windows to win. Returning that trio, and obviously Tyler Boyd is the most replaceable aspect of that. It makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Los Angeles Rams. Corner, free safety, right guard, edge, and linebacker. 
is another one of these teams where I was looking down this roster and I was like, they got some dudes kind of littered everywhere. They actually have a first round pick for the first time since I believe they took Jared Goff, uh, like almost like a decade ago. Um, cornerback, uh, Akella Weatherspoon, he is a free agent. We'll see. They, basically what happened with the Rams is because they didn't have all these uh, like first round picks, they had to spend a bunch of UDFA uh, time and energy and these late round picks. It's kind of up in the air if they view them as actual starters or if those were just players that were kind of eating snaps uh, last season. So at corner and then at free safety, Jordan Fuller and John Johnson, both of them are free agents out there. Um, and then we talked about it on our top 10 free agents show. Kevin Dotson, he came in there um, at right guard and was absolutely amazing for them. There's no way they let him walk. So that's a listed here, but I would be pretty surprised if he uh, was left. You listed Edge famously a few years ago. The Rams offered multiple first round picks plus for Brian Burns. Do you think that they Ooh. could go back in with a 19th overall pick for Brian Burns? I wouldn't hate it. They were 14th in pass rush win rate last year. And keep in mind they have Aaron Donald out there. So they can they can definitely use an edge rusher. Um, my guy Byron Young, freak athlete out there. He was pretty good yeah. as a rotational player, but yeah, but Brian Burns would be would be pretty fun right here. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering if these teams, and obviously most likely that trade would have to be done earlier than later, um, if these teams that are in this late teens, 20s, would be interested in a player like that, obviously yeah. what, 25 years old, that they'd have to give a contract to on top of it and report that he's asking for roughly $30 million per year, which is what David Newton reported of ESPN. Um, but they've shown previous interest. I just wonder if they return to that as well. Yeah. I would okay. like it. Pittsburgh Steelers are next. For you, their team needs cornerback, offensive tackle, quarterback, center, right guard, slot wide receiver, free safety, and linebacker. So there was a pretty big report um, from Gary Dolak, who's been covering the Steelers for as long as I've been alive. And he said that the debate isn't, outside player coming in versus Kenny Pickett. The internal debate that the Steelers are having, it's Kenny Pickett versus Mason Rudolph. And he says they're not even like really paying attention to the Justin Fields and Russell Wilsons. Do you we'll believe learn, it? We'll learn. I mean, I don't think he's just pulling that out of his ass. Uh, so I somewhat believe it. Uh, we'll learn that soon enough. So quarterback, yes, they can upgrade what they have currently. Will they actually do that? I'm not sure. Uh, since everyone kind of talks about the quarterback position, let's hit on the other ones real quick. Uh, at corner, uh, Levi Wallace, he's a free agent. They already knocked it out of the park with Joey Porter Jr. Um, when they did get Joey Porter Jr. In, into the starting lineup, they moved Pat Peterson uh, into the slot. So I think they can use an either an outside corner or a slot corner. And then at offensive tackle, they drafted last year Broderick Jones, who was a left tackle in college. They played him at right tackle as a rookie. Um, which one do they want him to kind of settle in at? Uh, but this is kind of the range where these tackles are going to be uh, key picks and then center fringe starter there, right guard fringe starter in the final year of his contract. And then Allen Robinson's a cut candidate. So I think it should mostly be uh, on the offensive side of the ball, but I do want to mention that corner is a need. Yeah. And they've already cut offensive tackle chooks of core four as well. Uh, I believe the quarterback report, to be honest, like I understand that if you're a fan of the 31 other teams across the league, uh, it might not seem realistic to choose between Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph, but this is also an organization loyal that one, it seems like a lot of their draft picks are leaked heavily before the NFL draft. And two, they are very loyal, as you just put it, uh, to a fault at times. I mean, final year of Ben Roethlisberger, for example. Um, and go on for many other previous players. It's uh, ranking them of a believable report of two below mediocre quarterbacks. Yes. Uh, I would believe it with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We knew Najee Harris to the Steelers about four months Correct. before that pick was called it. Correct. Miami Dolphins next. Center, offensive guard, defensive tackle, edge, linebacker, free safety, and outside corner. And uh, Hayden, right now, the Miami Dolphins are $59.6 million over the cap in effective cap space. 
this team has some very serious decisions. They are in uh, some cap hell. Um, they have a lot of good players, and that's why they're going to have to make some interesting decisions. But we talked about in the, the free agent show, center and offensive guard, uh, Connor Williams and Robert Hunt. Those are both free agents. Their backups also free agents as well. So we have to start there because they have to keep to uh, upright because of obviously his injury history, but also just because uh, – everything else kind of falls apart if Tua is under pressure. Um, beyond that, uh, Christian Wilkins, he's a franchise tag candidate at defensive tackle. When they interviewed Anthony Weaver, their new defensive coordinator, um, he didn't say for sure that Christian Wilkins is going to be back. Christian Wilkins is a hell of a player, but I do think that he's kind of a tag and trade candidate. That would be a big deal um, because his backups are also free agents. The defensive tackle big need and then edge rushers. We love Jalen Phillips and, and Bradley Chubb, but both of them coming off major injuries, both happened late in the season. It's hard to count on them right now as well. And then there's like just a bunch of cut candidates, linebackers, safeties. Uh, it's a tough spot. They're going to make some very serious decisions. I think even going to corner uh, Xavier Howard, Jalen Ramsey, both making $25 million a piece this next year. Are both of them back? Are one of them back? Uh, big decisions for a new defensive coordinator. Totally. And I would throw out offensive tackle out there too, because Tron Armstead has mentioned retirement or maybe not the R word, but has yeah. hinted at who knows where his future is because he keeps getting injured. Um, and as you outlined, offensive line, pretty important for a quarterback who, by the way, Jeremy Fowler, quote, there's plenty of time this offseason to execute a new deal for Tua, who will inevitably be paid like a top 10 passer. So... That's very different than the public conversation that's being had on Twitter of, hey, who's Mike McDaniel's Matthew Stafford when maybe the Miami Dolphins paid to a, like a top 10 quarterback. Did you know the Dolphins have the oldest league in the roster or oldest roster in the league? Wow. That's a better way of saying that. Even oldest. older than the Saints? Even older than the Saints. Um, and this is from MLJ, beat writer for the ESPN. Quote, applying the tag to its best homegrown player i.e. Christian Wilkins, makes more sense than letting him walk in free agency. Both sides want him in South Florida long-term, so an extension this offseason seems likely. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to have to do the Saints things with their contracts and just push <laughs> money way out into the future. Man, Philadelphia Eagles picking at 22. I haven't felt like that in a while. Number of needs for Harry Roseman's Eagles. Linebacker, center offensive guard, slot wide receiver, Running back, slot corner, free safety, and edge. Hayden, I can count about three or four positions on that list that Harry Roseman just doesn't care about, too. Well, he <laughs> has this addiction to defensive linemen and offensive linemen. He doesn't need them, you know? So it's time to look at the positions that matter less because – to go from where they're at versus drafting a first or second round pick, you're going to elevate those spots a ton, uh, just putting it this way. Linebackers. Zach Cunningham, Nicholas Morrow, Shaq Leonard, all three of them are free agents. Nicobe Dean is undersized. He's also played 220 snaps, 229 snaps in the last two seasons. So linebacker to me is a massive need. It's always been that way. With Jason Kelsey's retirement, they have Cam Jurgens and Landon Dickerson uh, as fill-ins. Uh, I'm not sure which one they're going to pivot to center. The other one will be guard, but they also probably need another replacement uh, for whatever one they want to mix in there. And then slot wide receiver. Obviously, they have like one of the best, if not the best, one-two duos in the league. But I mean, Quez Watkins, Julio Jones, Olamide Sakias, they weren't good. They're also all three of them are free agents. So I do think that that is a... Uh, position of value and they they will use three wide receiver sets so i could see him going leaning in all the way at wide receiver as he's done at edge defense tackle and offensive line for years um and then you get into your running backs they're not going to care about that position no. very much no i'm repeating myself here but fascinated by what the eagles do if they self-scout and they have to based on what happened this past year. And they clearly have done that with the coordinators, you know, bringing in Vic Fangio, who was previously part of going to Miami, a consultant when they went on the Super Bowl run. And then offensively bringing Kellen Moore, who is very different than what Nick Sirianni has run offensively. And Sirianni has said multiple times that, Hey, the OC is going to call the offense. It is going to be the OC's offense to me. That is very helpful with attacking over the middle of the field. Like we're going to get with AJ Brown, who thrived there with Tennessee and does so when afforded the opportunities in Philadelphia. And Devontae Smith can do the exact same thing. Um, God, yeah. Yep. Jeremy Fowler, interesting nugget here. Quote Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat 
both a year from free agency. Reddit could be traded if no deal is reached. Philly essentially has to pick one of these two. Reddit obviously was a huge contract that they gave a couple years ago. And I would say it's not on this list, but they need the high pick defensive tackles to play great from like start oh, to yeah. finish. Like oh, yeah. obviously Jalen Carter had moments last year. My guy, Milton Williams is probably the most consistent member of that mm -hmm. defensive tackle group. Love Jordan Davis as a pick and as a player and as just a talent that few people like that exist. Mm -hmm. um, but need to show something because yeah. obviously if you invest in those pieces, you need to expect them to play at a really high level like they do on offensive line. But the defensive line certainly hasn't done that to the degree that it uh, was expected to last year. Uh, the other thing is slot safety. That's a position where I thought they got continuously picked on. So like someone like Cooper DeGene, who like is kind of in this range, can kind of fit into either one of those. The both of the outside corners are going to be on the roster, uh, even though they were, they were very up and down because they paid them a lot of money. All of that stuff's guaranteed they're going to be back. But I think slot, kind of nickel player, free safety, linebacker, hybrid, like get them a Kyle Hamilton type and see what right. happens. I mentioned the self-scouting thing on offense and just quickly on defense. We've talked about this, but I mean, in a league where the McVay, Shanahan, whatever offense you want to talk about attacks the middle of the field. And those are the most efficient passes across the league. Uh, not caring about linebacker or safety can be a bit of an issue, but that's yeah. has been, you know, you can't be perfect at every single position. You can't be nineties at every single spot. And so you have to pick and choose it. And you know, how he has, you know, gone garbage diving in many cases at that linebacker and safety spot. And I think it'll be very evident this off season. If he likes Sirianni offensively, we'll do the same thing defensively. Okay. Houston Texans are next outside corner slot corner, tight end running back, strong safety, offensive line and slot receiver. Hayden, you didn't mention quarterback. You didn't mention left tackle. You didn't mention wide receiver didn't mention edge rusher it's pretty, pretty good. good for team building pretty damn good and a ton of cap space um so what's going to happen is they're going to plug in these kind of cheap positions like tight end dalton schultz a free agent maybe they resign him devin singletary at running back he's a free agent maybe they go into the saquon barkley because they have all of the money to spend uh and but i do think that just the cornerback spot is kind of what sticks out desmond king uh he's a free agent he's been their slot wide receiver and then Obviously, we like uh, uh, Derek Stingley at outside corner, but uh, three Steven of the top, Nelson kind of got picked on. Yeah, three of the top four outside corner snaps, they're not under contract, and they were only 20th in passing EPA allowed. So I do think that corner is a spot there. Um, free safe or strong safety, because uh, they have Jalen Petrie on the back half. Strong safety, all those guys are free agents. Uh, Jimmy Ward, 33 years old as well. And then I wrote up offensive line. You can read about this like in this, this blurb. Um, they rotated all these guys around because they were all injured and stuff. I do think they have, in theory, a starting five uh, offensive line. They've, they've put enough capital into a starting five. It's just kind of hard to figure out which position, like Titus Howard, is he a guard? Is he a tackle? Juice Scruggs, is he center? Mm -hmm. What kind of they actually iron out here? I do think just throwing more depth at this would be uh, pretty sweet. But I also think that CG Stroud can navigate the pocket at a very high level too. So um, and I think it, it helps to have obviously Larry tons at left tackle. You can leave yeah. in isolation. Oh, yeah. And then basically, as we talked about with Bobby Slowick, have a pass pro plan where you leave in an extra one or two mm -hmm. or three pass protectors for to help the other four guys along the yeah. offensive line. It's just yeah. super smart how they're doing. It. Yep. Th this team's going to be able to plug these holes up very right. quickly. And they're in this spot now with rookie contract for all those highly important, you know, pivotal positions, cornerstone positions, where to me, this is one of those teams that can risk it a little bit with an explosive mm -hmm. cherry on top running back. Jeremy Fowler mentions the same thing, quote, there's buzz league wide that Houston could try to improve at running back to help second year quarterback CJ Stroud. Uh, going to Saquon Barkley would be pretty damn cool. Yes. Here. I think like players like Mike Evans, like the biggest free agents that have finally escaped their team, I think the Texans are going to be like, come play with us. We got the right staff in place. We got the right quarterback in place. And let's see what happens. Dallas Cowboys. Corner, left tackle or left guard, center, running back, linebacker, and defensive tackle. I will add 
that everyone reporting that Dak will get a new deal this offseason because it shifts on his $59 million cap hit. Uh, helps alleviate some of that for just this mm-hmm. offseason. And then maybe at the exact same time, CeeDee Lamb will get paid like a top three wide receiver in the league. Yeah, Dak Prescott, they're going to keep kind of pushing this money around into future years because he deserves it. Played like an MVP last year. Uh, cornerback, I listed that at the top of the list. Uh, Deron Bland and uh, Trevon Diggs, that's an excellent one-two. But Steph Gilmore got picked on, 34 years old. He's a free agent. Slot corner, Jordan Lewis, he's a free agent. So they kind of need one more corner, in my opinion. And then uh, Tyron Smith, left tackle, been there forever. Uh, he's a free agent. I do believe I saw a report that he wants to return. That would make some sense. Um, they can be kind of multiple just because like players like Tyler Smith can kind of go to multiple spots there. Um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if offensive lineman is on the Cowboys wish list. Uh, their center is a free agent. I think he'll probably be back. And then linebacker or uh, linebacker and running back uh, lower positions, um, but also needs uh, based off free agency. Okay. We'll keep it moving. Uh, by the way, I, I've seen like Tyler Biotish mentioned as leaving like, man, losing Tyron Smith and your starting center would be kind of devastating for yeah. that offensive line. I, I don't think see they, it happening. No, I, I think they need to bring their center back for sure. Uh, also, highly intrigued to see what they do at running back because we know that that has been, for a fantasy football relevance, a very important position for us. And you go from Ezekiel Elliott to Tony Pollard to now a question mark for like the first time in a long time. Again, very interested in that. Green Bay Packers next. Free safety, slot corner, right guard, outside corner, defensive tackle, left tackle, and running back. Hayden, this is the league's youngest roster, Mm -hmm. which you can kind of expect when you think of the quarterback plus all the pass catchers on the team. Uh, But speaking of the quarterback, this will be back-to-back off seasons where Jordan Love gets a new deal. He completely deserves it. Played like a top 10 guy. The ceiling is absolutely there. This is another one of these teams where I was looking through the roster and I was like, damn, they got a lot of good players everywhere. Kind of ranking these team needs was very difficult because uh, I think they'll they'll plug up some of these guys that are free agents um, before they get to free agency, but also like free safety, slot corner, right guard, like not the most important positions. I think that they can just replace those guys with ease um also new defensive coordinator so like these issues we've seen at defensive tackle and safety and linebacker over the years i wonder if just having a new dc calling the shots is just going to make those positions look a little bit of a little bit elevated um i think just going through this it was the free safety all of them are free agents so i think that's kind of a spot but not technically in the first round you know me i've been hyping up the talent on this packers defense as like the pieces are better than the sum of the parts and you know, as we saw with the offense, it took a little bit of time to get there. And when it did, it was outstanding. I'm not going to say the defense is going to be exactly that same, but it's one of those where it will probably be better no matter what, based on who is now calling the plays and putting those players in the position to succeed. I'm really excited for the Packers in 2024. Uh, when I was going through this, I just didn't appreciate this enough um, throughout the regular season. They got a seventh rounder at left tackle, just went in there yeah. and just played well. Like, I mean, not every organization just gets a seventh rounder as a left tackle, but I think that he's kind of going to believe, there. believe Zach Tom fourth round pick at right tackle, a man on the list. Sure. Uh, and like you said, very rare for that to happen. Yeah. I will add we, lots of talk about running back cliffs aging. I mean, they are definitely different on the age column, but Aaron Jones totally outplaying AJ Dillon. Aaron Jones prior to last season, maybe some questions on like longevity at this time, 365 days ago, how he'd be on this team. And now I know he's making a decent chunk of money, not as much as he was previously, but you can't let him go based on how he finished the season because he was incredibly important and not just explosives and running the football, but also in pass protection out there for Jordan Love. Yeah, AJ Dillon's a free agent. Aaron Jones is going to be 30 years old. Final year of his deal. He might have to take another pay cut here to stick on the roster. Um, but it's kind of like, like a little bit of a curse. He also missed some time, and you don't right. know with that size, age, co- or combination of the two. So I think this is the time to throw a third, fourth round pick at running back and see what happens um, just because uh, of the age. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First need. Quarterback. Then outside wide receiver. Both of those can be filled by bringing back some veteran players and Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans. Then we get linebacker, 
Again, Levante David, Devin White, then offensive guard, free safety, center, defensive tackle, and power running back. Um, you know, based on who comes back and who doesn't, Hayden, it kind of like a swinging doors moment a little yeah. bit for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Very tough job here to navigate if you are the GM here, just because they played way better than anyone expected last year. They're now picking 26 because of that. Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans are like going to test the free agency. Like there was a uh, something in his contract that there could have been some um, extension talks with Mike Evans that just passed. So now he's like for sure hitting free agency. Will the Bucks be able to match the big, biggest offer out there for Mike Evans? Same thing with Baker Mayfield. There's nothing contractually that makes Baker Mayfield going to stay there, especially when Canales and a lot of his staff is out of there. So we'll see. This team is pretty decent. Are they excellent? Hell no. But this is going to be a tough kind of period to kind of navigate. Are they going to continue to rebuild? Or are they going to keep attacking at this? So um, it starts out with Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans. And then from there, uh, both their starting linebackers are free agents. Their left guard, he's a free agent. Their right guard, um, he was really bad. And I think that's why the guard spots being that bad, Ryan Jensen's retirement, that was the reason why they couldn't run the ball. I think part of it's a Rashad White issue, but I think the interior offensive line remains problematic on offense i will say and i don't have the numbers to back this up but just watching on a weekly basis i would guess that the bucks had some of the best injury luck across the league and yes. especially on the offensive line like i don't remember more than two games where like that same five unit did not play together and that is so important for a team that probably like you said overperformed expectations which they obviously did yeah. and then tristan Worf's obviously playing left tackle is one of the best in the league and just a juggernaut out there um yeah i it was a throwaway line in one of our previous shows but i mentioned that liam cohen was a part of that ram staff when they claimed uh, baker mayfield after he was let go by the carolina panthers uh it actually sounds like one of the reasons why liam cohen took this job was to work again with baker mayfield and the, they actually have this mm -hmm. connection and relationship so we all expect baker mayfield to return to the team mm -hmm. uh and he absolutely will i'm just less certain now that mike evans is going to be back and that's that's scary. because I mean he's 30 years old and a team literally might give him like 60 million dollars guaranteed or something. Yes. You know, yes. Because players like that do not reach free agency on the consistency element. And you just hope that uh again his 1000 yard streak seasons continue when you give him that contract. Buffalo Bills are next. Interesting spot for the Bills. Edge, defensive tackle, vertical wide receiver, free safety. Power running back. On that last note, real quick, we know that James Cook is this quote unquote lead ball carrier on this team. Obviously, they leaned into him with Joe Brady even more. But even when that happened, Hayden, when they were playing their best and they wanted to focus more of the offense around the running backs, they still refused mm -hmm. to give James Cook the short yardage touches. And we can only expect that to continue moving forward. And so Leonard Fournette. Obviously, never really got involved. Damian Harris, uh, Latavius Murray, all these guys are no longer attached to James Cook, and they will probably either go younger or bigger name to to really um, lock up that spot. Let's put it that way. And when I was going through this, I forgot Naeem Hines. He signed a multi-year deal. He was a cut candidate. He didn't play last year. I think it was like a C-do accident or something ridiculous. Uh, so that was unfortunate. But yeah, I'm with you. Uh, James Cook, I liked how they used him. I don't want them using them more than what they did. Uh, more importantly, edge rusher. 35-year-old Von Miller, been dealing with a ton of issues, has not been the same player. Which uh, was supposed to be like their signing to take them over the edge, like their yeah. closer to get them off the field against Patrick Mahomes and stuff. And it didn't work out from day one. In no, did not. And then on top of that, AJ Epinesa, Leonard Floyd, Shaq Lawson, all of them are free agents. They just need to keep swinging. I know they keep investing into that spot, but they have not hit a home run with any of these draftees or signees. So they got to keep going there. Defensive tackle, same thing. It's, it's it's a struggle. Jordan Phillips, Daquan Jones, Tim Settle, Puna Ford, Linval Joseph, all free agents. Ed Oliver's a stud out there, but he needs a lot of depth behind him. So you can throw like four, five, six different names on the defensive line here. And then I think the big one that gets the most talk is the wide receiver spot. Are they going to keep Gabe Davis or not? I like what they have with Diggs, Kincaid, Dawson Knox, Khalil Shakur, uh, James Cook underneath, but man, do I just miss the 
Josh Allen throws way downfield. So good news is there's a lot of players in the draft that can work downfield. Um, Troy Franklin, for example, Brian Thomas, for example, in the draft. Um, but I think beyond that, it's it's the yeah. defensive line, man. That is a huge problem. And I'll throw out the safety group because yes. it kind of felt like Micah Hyde and Jordan Poirier came in together and were part of this team that was learning how to be one of the best in the league. Mm -hmm. And then now it kind of sounds like both are going to exit at the exact same time. And that's yeah. pretty significant. Yeah. Pretty significant. Detroit Lions next. Our Lions. Outside corner, number one. Two, edge. Then three and four, left guard, right guard. Then defensive tackle. And then X, wide receiver. Uh, can they do it all in one offseason? Uh, I certainly hope so. I think that the left guard, right guard combination, all of those guys that were getting snaps are free agents. I'd be pretty surprised if they left out a question mark just because of like the identity of this offense being able to run the ball and keep one of the best off. offensive lines in the league. Right. So I think that those guys will be back in priorities outside corner. It's been an issue for a long time. They basically like got a brand new secondary uh, this last off season. They were still 25th in passing EPA allowed. Uh, it's one of the reasons why they were not in the Super Bowl. And the same thing, edge rushers, they got free agents. Um, and on top of that, they were still just 26 in pass rush win rate, even with Aiden Hudson being a baller out there. So it's the same positions. Got to get the edge right. Got to get the corner right. And then for fantasy purposes, Josh Reynolds, he's a free agent. Uh, this is not a position where they need a bunch of target volume just because they got running backs, tight ends, and obviously Amon Ross St. Brown, Jameson Williams in theory. By the way, Josh, Jameson Williams, an underdog, is being drafted like 100th overall again. Whew. They're bringing in somebody else for extra. Can we, can we have that quick day. conversation with sure. Jameson Williams? Because, sure. okay, let's say they do let Josh Reynolds just walk away, even though I don't know what the market could be for Josh Reynolds because – For $4 million, call it a day. Yeah. Obviously – He's had his best years attached to Brad Holmes and namely Ben Johnson and sure had a rough final game where he doesn't come down with the fourth down catch. But to me, yes, you can have a improved talent at that position, but Josh Reynolds and Jameson Williams do things differently. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about like the tree of where the football goes on this team, okay. Pass catchers, Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta running backs, Jameer Gibbs, and Dave Montgomery. If Jameson Williams is out there, one, it's a question to me if he's even going to be a full-time player in two wide receiver sets. And then on top of that, if he is out there, he's more so a splash player, even though we have seen some more comeback routes and shorter routes and things like that. But that is a fifth mouth defeat on this team. That's a nuts ADP for what you're talking about, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Good news is we have six months to argue against it. Um. Amon Ross St. Brown, Panay Sewell could both get extensions this offseason. They're both eligible for it. Obviously, Brad Holmes has nailed almost every single draft pick. They also have $37.8 million to spend in effective cap space this offseason. My ears are up how already the conversation is very different around Jared Goff this offseason than it was last offseason. Uh, I had heard last offseason that Goff's representation had approached this team and that they wanted to get a contract deal done and the Lions were just kind of hesitant to do it. It sounds like the Lions are ready to get that extension done. And it makes sense from, you know, the environment that they're creating for him is perfectly suited for Jared Goff. We talked about the pass catchers. We talked about the offensive line and then it's still attached to mm -hmm. Ben Johnson. So nothing's changing in that department. And so unless, you know, Panay Sewell and Taylor Decker go down or so on and so forth, I wouldn't expect the success rate to change at all either for no. Jared Goff. I would agree. I'm very curious to see if we're going to get this third tier quarterback market to actually get established because historically it's been like the Baker Mayfield types and then right. you have the SARS. Could we develop a Tua, Jared Goff, Geno Smith type of tier in the middle where we don't have to pay Jared Goff $50 million? Could he stay at $30 million? Is that too much to ask? We'll, we'll see. Well, just to put that in perspective, right now Geno Smith is getting paid $25 million. I like that. Jared Goff, $33 million. Kirk Cousins was at $35 million. Derek Carr, 37.5. So that is still drastically different than like the Dax, the Matthew Staffords, and then obviously the Joe Burrows at 55, the Justin Herberts at 52 and a half. I will say, like, 
a name that's thrown in there, like, you know, Russell Wilson at 49 million, Daniel Jones at 40 million kind of skews yeah. that from the team perspective, because the agents can be like, oh, well, Daniel Jones is making $40 million. Right. Why can't Jared Goff make 40 million? And it's harder to use that leverage when your team has had so much success talking about Jared right. Goff and Tua, and eventually we'll get there with Brock Purdy in a couple of years. It's like, don't pay these guys where their stats are saying, because everything else is around them is good. And if you start paying the quarterback all that money, then the things around that will not be as good. And then what happens? So yeah, we'll unless see. Brad Holmes never misses, which is a possibility. Yeah, it could happen. <laughs> <laughs> Baltimore Ravens, a great team, but you list eight needs for them. Edge, right guard, left guard, linebacker, free safety, size, speed, wide receiver, and cornerback depth. I'm assuming you miss you list all these needs because obviously the Ravens were the best regular season team in the league this year by many accounts. When their defensive coordinator leaves, I'm assuming maybe a lot of their free agents might go in that direction as well. And uh, yeah, teams like to pick off the best teams. Yeah, they lost their entire team as a staff. Uh, Jadavian Clowney, Kyle Van Noy, their edge rushers, both free agents. Um, this is a team that uses a lot of capital on uh, the defensive line historically. Um, uh, yep. Yeah, and then both the offensive linemen at the guard spots, both of them are free agents. Uh, I think that those guys have a chance to return here. So I was really like nitpicking. Like when I list eight team needs, it's those eight team needs hit a lot different than some of the other eight team needs teams that I listed out there. Uh, Patrick Queen, he's a free agent. Um, his backup, also a free agent. So next to Roquan Smith, what do they want to do there? Um, obviously, Patrick Queen's been a very like up and down, highly debated player. And then Power running back for fantasy circles, Gus Edward, J.K. Dobbins, both free agents. Keaton Mitchell, uh, we liked what he provided, but that was a very serious injury late in the season. I wouldn't expect him to do a whole lot next year. So it's like Justice Hill, who I think is like a nice passing down option, but they need a true number one, like Derrick Henry. Wouldn't that be a little bit, a little bit of fun? Uh, so we'll see what they do there. And then like, yeah, free safety, uh, it's they're a free agent there. And then wide receiver, they keep trying. Do they have a true number one yet? I still don't think so. Um, but it's kind of a function of the offense from Jeremy Fowler. Again, quote, some personnel people inside the league believe the Ravens will target a running back with pedigree in free agency. Obviously JK Dobbins coming off multiple significant injuries in multiple seasons. Free agent. I have no idea what his market's going to be. If there will be one Gus Edwards, we know justice Hill. We know Keaton Mitchell, as you said, knee injury. So yeah, Derek Henry would be a lot of Ooh. on this team. I mean, if, uh, if we get Saquon Barkley, the Texans, Derek Henry to the Ravens, this will be a fun offseason. From ESPN beat writer Jameson Hensley, Ravens general manager Eric DeCosta declined to reveal whether the team would use the tag on Justin Matabuike, who's a defensive tackle, saying he didn't want to show his hand. Quote, we'll know what's best for us to do, DeCosta said at the end of the season. He's not leaving. I didn't even bother list, listing defensive tackle. <laughs> San Francisco 49ers. Right guard. Right tackle. So you can pick up a nickel blitz. Edge rusher. Cornerback. And linebacker. That last one stings, Hayden. Because uh, if you just had Fred Warner and Drake Green Greenlaw returning, uh, linebacker probably would not be listed here. Yeah, February. Uh, we'll see where Dre, Dre Greenlaw could return next year. I mean, Achilles. can he miss the entire se season? I don't know. Uh, and his backup is a free agent, so they're going to at least need a depth option there. But I think most importantly, right guard, right tackle just has not been good enough. We talked about this forever and finally bit them in the Super Bowl, especially late in the game. They couldn't communicate. I think there was times where just one-on-one -on -one that they would straight up lose. Uh I went back and watched the Super Bowl in the All-22, and like these defensive tackles that the Chiefs were picking up off the streets were absolutely dominating one-on-one -on -one against the run. That's why Christian McCaffrey didn't completely go crazy in the Super Bowl. So the offensive line, to me, is just the biggest thing here. And then uh, I guess we have to talk about Brandon Ayuk. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, so what the hell is this? Dan Graziano at ESPN wrote, I mean, an incredible column on like all these possible scenarios and every which way the 49ers could take this Bren Ayuk discussion this offseason. With that said, let's only focus on the last paragraph. I do want all of you to read this, but he says the most likely outcome to me with this shakes out, Ayuk ends up getting traded to a team where he's the clear number one wideout and where he can get the extension he wants, leaving the Niners to draft his replacement in the first round. That's the cleanest way for teams to address all of their needs. I see San Francisco extending Hufunga 
and coming to some sort of agreement with Kyle Juszczyk and Drake Greenlaw that keep them both around. Okay, Hayden. Brandon Ayuk, we talk about bringing ev- the band back together. Right. You know me and Brandon Ayuk. Even before he had this great season this year, I thought he was one of the most underrated route runners in the league. Um, Sauce Gardner believes the same thing. If you look at yards per route run versus man coverage, it is the same thing. And we know that when they face zone, a zone-heavy team, boom, it's a Debo Samuel week, right? Yep. Graziano is great at his mm-hmm. job. I do not think he's making this up. But for a team to prioritize a safety coming off a knee injury, a hybrid fullback, and a linebacker coming off an Achilles injury over Brandon Ayuk, an extension there, to right. me would be foolish. This team's in a Super Bowl window. Everyone's back. How they navigate this, it's not the easiest thing to do, but all of their really expensive players, you can just restructure their contracts and open up a ton of cap space, move some of the money that's due this year into future years, and then keep running this thing back. You are so close to winning the Super Bowl. Brandon Uke is such a key part of that. Talk about the play action, like where Brock Purdy's number one in the league. The reason why is because it's play action, and then here comes Brandon Uke on an in-breaking route over the middle. So to me, this would be completely the worst case scenario. Now, I will say the 49ers have been in this position with another position in the past, and it was that defensive tackle. They traded away DeForest Buckner and kept Ark Armstead, and they drafted Javon Kinlaw to hopefully be right. DeForest Buckner's replacement. That did not work out. So I do wonder, and to your point, Jeremy Fowler points out that 10 veteran players comprise more than 85% of the 49ers cap space. Mm-hmm. Just above 210 million. That includes Trent Williams, obviously at 31.6, Debo at 28.6 million, Eric Armstead at 28.4, Fred Warner at 24.5. Just restructure those contracts. Take take the the base salaries, convert them into bonuses, throw them into the future years, and then figure the rest out later. I think that I think that we'll have to have this Brandon Ayuk and Brock Purdy conversation, like where they actually have to make a a decision here in like two years they have time with brandy by the way you have the franchise tag there's no leverage i don't care that brandon you was was mad here by the way 1300 yards and then also making the super bowl right but you have the fifth year contract the franchise tag the, i don't think there's much room do you, do you like. think why this is being mentioned this early and granted there were some people mentioning that like t higgins might get traded last offseason to me that was ridiculous yeah i think it's similar to that though do, do, do you think that part of this could be though how brandon you and his representation is putting this out there yeah. where Brenna wants to be treated like a wide receiver one. And I mean, let's be real. Yeah. This position forces trades unlike any other across the league. Like, yeah. you know, AJ Brown wanted to be paid like it. Right. The Titans did not want to pay him. And so then you take now, obviously, a worse compensation for letting a talent like AJ Brown go to a really good team. Mm-hmm. Tyree Kill, Chiefs to the Dolphins. So like this happens almost every yeah. single year now. This would, if this happens, it would be like the Chiefs trading away Tyree Kill. The difference oh, is Patrick Mahomes versus Brock Purdy. Do you want to see the play action, see how hard that hits or man coverage with Brock Purdy without Brandon Uke? I don't. Right. Again, rarely do players like that just when you lump in every single position get moved when they're just hitting their peak. But it feels like a wide receiver, it happens more often than others. For sure. And so this kind of does feel a bit different to me. Like yeah. it, where there's smoke, there might be fire in this case. And that would just be crazy to me because especially when like Shanahan was the one who fell in love with Brandon Ayuk and, and developed him and developed him. I mean, early on was not playing because he was in the doghouse and now he's a ferocious run blocker on top of it. Like, I do wonder if Brandon Ayuk wants to go to a team where no matter what, he's getting 12 targets basically on every single week. If they win, if they would have won the Super Bowl, let's say they pick up that blitz score right. in overtime. Are right. we having this conversation? I mean, we're this close when, to when he's open goal. in the back of the end zone. Yeah. All right, Kansas City Chiefs. Offensive tackle, defensive tackle, wide receivers, linebacker, running back, free safety, and corner. I mean, these are all kind of weighted differently. Obviously, this team just won the Super Bowl. They're keeping their defensive coordinator. They obviously keep their play caller on top of it. Um, Where do you want to start here? Two big decisions right off the bat. Chris Jones, Legereus need two absolute superstars there. They have the franchise tag to use on one of them. Also, the Chiefs, their cap situation is not that bad, in my opinion. Uh, just keep both of them. That sounds like a plan uh, that I would start with. So um, assuming that both of those guys are back, I think the spot that they do have to address, uh, obviously wide receiver, this is a fantasy football show. Everyone knows that. 
But I think left tackle or right tackle, Donovan Smith, 31-year-olds, he's a free agent. Do they want to keep Juwan Taylor at right tackle? Do they want to move him back to left tackle? Um, so I think that offensive tackle is a spot. Good year to need offensive tackle. Great year to need a wide receiver. And then um, linebacker, Willie Gay, Drew Dran uh, Tranquil, they're both our free agents there. So I think that's kind of a secondary need. Same thing with running back. Uh, CEH, Derek McKinnon, both of them are free agents. We saw at Pacheco, like some of those things that we kind of talked about, some of his concerns, you saw those at the biggest time on the Super Bowl. Do they want to add somebody else next to Pacheco? But um, I think that Chris Jones and Legere is too important to let those guys leave. So I think wide receiver, offensive tackle for the Chiefs. Since we're mentioning so many ESPN articles this week, they did one with every beat writer uh, put out the most likely franchise tag candidate on the team. Uh, obviously, the Chiefs have two big time free agents in Legarius Sneed and Chris Jones. Adam Tyker mentions Legarius Sneed as the most likely to receive the franchise tag. However, this line stood out to me. Quote The Chiefs drafted four cornerbacks in 2022 and one more last year. So they've been preparing to lose Sneed for some time. I don't know. They have not. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think you can lose the Jerry Sneed when right. he and Trip McDuffie pair so well as an outside and an inside player where, right. you know, if, as we've seen, best wide receivers across the league be inside and outside players, guess what? You have an answer for both of them here. Yeah. And that's pretty important for Steve Spagnuolo. Yeah, you don't just let your 27 year old outside corner walk. Uh, Trent McDuffie, love him, but like he's been so good in the slot. Like, I wouldn't want to change no, no, no. that dynamics. So just keep, keep him. And again, there. the balance of that, of having like yeah. a premier guy who actually can travel and luxurious need, and then an inside guy, and also mm -hmm. the nickel blitzes, the inside looks that yeah. obviously Steve Spagnuolo throws out there. It's a, it's a good dynamic they have going. Yeah. I'd really lose. I mean, Chris Jones is awesome, mm -hmm. but try to figure out that level of replacement versus luxurious need to me. Yeah. Keep okay. both. Two more teams that do not have first round selections will kick things off with the Carolina Panthers outside wide receiver two and three left guard, right guard four edge five linebacker, six slot corner, seven defensive tackle and eight outside cornerback. What stuck out to you the most? I know you follow this team very closely. Um, Yeah. I mean, left guard and right guard, you say it was so bad and then right guard. It was also so bad. Part of that, is because they had to play seven left guards and eight right guards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we talked about the Bucks having injury luck along yeah. their offensive line. The Panthers were obviously the opposite right. of that. So like in a perfect world, could like Brady Christensen come back in at left guard and start 17 games? They'd be better off at that spot. Arson Corbett, Corbett at right guard. That would be helpful as well. Um, so to me, like, maybe those answers and you can't say this with like anything else in the roster. I, I, I'm trying not to laugh already. <laughs> maybe those answers at those spots are already on the roster. Whereas okay. at a bunch of the other positions, they aren't. Right. And especially at outside wide receiver. Yeah. And then like, I didn't list left tackle just because they've invested so much at that spot, but like he was a really bad player. So like Correct. all these players, like in theory, they have their offensive line, but they don't have their offensive line. Yeah. So, um, they don't have a, a lot of draft capital or free agency dollars to kind of fix the stuff. And I think that wide receiver has to be the number one spot. Adam Thielen, just looking at the contract, $9 million this year, another $5 million next year. Um, so if he's going to be in the slot. And that's and guaranteed money. And Hayden yeah. Hurst is guaranteed money. And Miles Sanders is guaranteed money. Right. So those guys are going to be in the mix. Uh, DJ Chark, he is a free agent. So they need a true X wide receiver. Mingo's not that. They need the X wide receiver players like Keon Coleman. Uh, yeah. There's some players in the draft that they have a chance to hit on at 33rd overall. So Frankie Luvu, who's this really versatile blitzing linebacker who plays at the second level too. Um, and by the way, Ezra Evero is coming back as defensive coordinator. Frankie Luvu almost certainly is going to return. Mm -hmm. The money might be pretty significant, like $10 million a year, if not more than that. The interesting one is Brian Burns. Again, David Newton reports that he was looking for $30 million per year. Um, and that the two sides weren't even close. Yeah. Now the Panthers did just bring in a new cap specialist and Brant Tillis from the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and so maybe they can do some of the Chris Jones stuff with that. But to me, the most likely outcome is buying yourself some more time with Brian Burns. And if you can't come to a deal, it's trade him. And I mentioned, yeah. you know, some of the 19 overall or somewhere in the 20s. Um, because obviously you can't just let him walk. And I think a bunch of Panthers fans probably have PTSD from the Dave Gettleman era. A franchise tagging Josh Norman and then in like 
July just cutting him and getting nothing for it. Um, yeah. So that, that is not going to happen here with uh, Brian Burns. But from the outside looking in, I have no lean either way if he does get a long-term deal or if he doesn't. Um, so I think you have to be able to evaluate Bryce Young this year that I would be willing as good as he is tag and trade him just to throw as much as you can to see if Bryce Young has a chance to succeed in the league. Okay, we'll close this out with the Cleveland Browns. Linebacker, defense tackle, and wide receiver. Just three needs on this team? This team's good, man. It's just the fucking quarterback. Could they get Deshaun to play? Because I think that this team has a bunch of these positions filled out. They ran bad with injuries on the offensive line, but they're all back. Amari Cooper's back. David Njoku's back. I think Nick Chubb will probably be back, but maybe uh after, after taking a pay cut because of his injury and then the defense like their corners are back they're they got miles garrett still so uh linebacker anthony walker Sion taki taki uh free agents out there um we love jok but he's kind of a speedster at linebacker they need some size next to him uh defensive tackle this is kind of a big deal here uh jordan elliott shelby harris Maurice Hurst, all free agents. They were 15th in rushing EPA allowed, much better against the pass. So I think those are kind of the two spots. And then uh, I listed wide receiver here just because Elijah Moore, Cedric Tillman, David Bell, they're trying. These are day two types of players. I think there's room to upgrade, especially Amari Cooper. He's 30 years old, final year of his contract as well. So maybe this is- And no guaranteed that- money. But he's been playing on no guaranteed money right. for a while. And it, like if we're talking about the passing game, it's Amari Cooper and David Njoku, then like, Kind of everyone else for sure. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't list running back here. Yeah, it, once we get the Nick, if Nick Chubb's released, obviously I would throw there. I think that the most likely outcome is that he takes a pay cut and then just back with the team. But, but we'll uh, almost that. certainly, though, they'll bring another running back no matter what because of the injury that Nick Chubb has. Mm-hmm. And Jerome Ford, though, yeah, get your guy. <laughs> I, I, you okay, throw running back in here. This yeah. is one of these organizations that I just don't think it's going to be as much a priority just looking at like who's calling the shots currently. Uh, I, I've been on you know this street for a while, but I, on some level, I kind of think it's a make or break season for Deshaun Watson. I understand that he still oh, yeah. has guaranteed money moving forward, and like they can't get rid of him after this year because even in yeah. 2025, he just has a casual 46 million dollars guaranteed, right? Um, like they couldn't get rid of him. We, but, we just we just saw this with the Russell Wilson stuff. If he's correct. that bad, you have to just move on. Correct. I I think that this organization has clearly chosen Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry over Deshaun Watson, and that and that's a yeah. pretty big conversation. And again, Deshaun maybe he turns it around. It certainly hasn't happened so far. But I'll just go back to what I believe is almost an olive branch to Deshaun Watson is this hiring of Ken Dorsey as an mm. offensive coordinator. Stefanski still hasn't said if he is or if he isn't giving up play calling. I'm sure he'll be asked about it during combine week as well. Oh. I certainly hope he doesn't because he's fantastic. He's <laughs> but again, Ken Dorsey has worked right. with Cam Newton, days in Carolina, early days, has worked with Josh Allen in Buffalo. It's these guys who have all the physical traits you could ever want to hopefully play on time and in structure a little more often. And to me, that is that direction, the reason for this yeah. hiring. I could be wrong, though. Mm. No, I completely agree. I just... To reiterate, this team has so many good players. And like that's why they were still winning games with uh, Joe Flacco. So we'll see. They just need to get Deshaun back ready to go. And then they, they need to mark. If Mar- Amari Cooper goes down like oh, this he played whole, so well last year. The whole thing just goes in the drain. So that's why I think you have to address wide receiver. Again. Uh, I saw that Joe Flacco wasn't included on the needs either. Well, they don't have that much money to spend. Uh, I think that the Joe Flacco experience was fun. Do I see him having a huge market as the 39 year old? I don't. So maybe he just resigns as a backup. Yeah, that'd be fun. That would right? make for an exciting <laughs> season for sure. Yeah. Okay, that's going to do it for us. Again, subscribe to the channel. We already have the top 10 for agents at every single position. Uh, Hayden and Brett Coleman just posted a video on this channel on some of their favorite underrated, some might call them sleepers in the 2024. NFL draft. Uh, and next week is combine week. Um, obviously there are head coach and general manager interviews at the start of it. And then starting Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it's all the workouts. Hey, and I actually stay home and don't go to the combine because we create better content here. Yes. So do your part and hit the thumbs up and subscribe because we're going to have content almost every single day next week. <laughs>
Yeah, I think we're like 65 days away from the Super Bowl. We'll probably post 50 NFL draft. Or, or NFL draft. We'll probably post 50 ish uh, videos over that time. Yeah. By the way, I remember you would talk about we're almost at 100,000, like back when we were like at 90,000 subscribers. We're actually close to mm-hmm. 100,000 now. So it's let's tough time of year. There. Let's yeah, I took there. my vacation a little bit early. Let's put it that way. Let's, All right. Let's get there. For Weaves, for Hayden, I'm Josh. Up the fella. We will talk to y'all soon. See ya.